Hey guys, I'm back again. Um, so, I wanted to go over something quickly about John Winthrop and his decision for America. I know we glanced over it a little bit. Um, so, for example, if you were to go to your classroom, uh, one of the worksheets was this, 13 Colonies and the Analysis, and at the bottom it said John Winthrop's decision for America, 1629. What it asked you to do is it asked you to read Rutman's thing, page 50 to 52, and if you go back to classroom, it is this one on New England. Um, and to understand this and, like, the way forward through Puritan life, I think this drawing is the best thing that I could do for it. So, again, I'm going to explain what this is in that sense, so that way we can kind of get a gist a bit more of the Puritans. Who were they? Were they really super religious? Or how did it even play? All that stuff. Um, but what let's do is we'll go through this. So, John Winthrop, we know he is a Puritan founder. Um, and we know Puritans a bit more now. So, it starts over here. And in the document, uh, or in the book, Rutman writes that John Winthrop really had no planning. He had no set thing that he was trying to accomplish um, in terms of, like, actually definitively writing it out, having a plan for what he was going to do. Um, so he's kind of coming over to the New World with really a blank slate, which is very weird, you would think, that you're up, you're leaving, coming to a new country, and or a new place, not even a country, coming to a new land, and you don't really have anything set in stone. Follows my mind, I have no clue in that one. Uh, so we see him here. So let's say he's back in England. Um, he did, or Rutman does mention the calling. So it's this calling by God, it's this divine intervention that really inspires John uh, Winthrop to come and to help others and to start this new movement. Uh, so that's what's known as the calling. And so we see this calling coming over here. Um, and within the calling, they're going to bring more people. So Winthrop is going to bring other settlers, uh, convince them of the Puritan lifestyle, and do God's work and bring them over. So initially, when they come over, it's this settlement concept. It's this centralized hub where everyone's going to come together. Um, they're going to live next to each other. They're going to work with each other. It's going to be this nice, happy land. Everything's going to be great. Reality is, though, after step one that happens, uh, step two happens. Because the state of nature is true. Uh, John Locke, Thomas Hobbes were right in defining people, humans in general, that we tend to do our own thing. So instead of being settlers and staying clumped together, we disperse for various reasons. Uh, so you see down here in two, it actually, people start moving away. So yes, they're settlements, but they're split. They're not working as one. It's not as unified through this. Um, and it happens for a lot of things. We've seen, you know, the Puritan life in general changing. We've seen adultery becoming a big deal. We've seen fornication, all these things, gambling, cockfighting. So things are changing as we move on. Um, so the settlements, is, something's changing. Something's happening. It's happening here. The calling, then, it splits into two ways. Um, we're trying to, when we come over to the New World, the Puritans are leaving England, so they don't like this system in England where law and order, religion, everything is in the same boat because they believe in this corruption. Catholicism, what used to be before, and even Protestantism, you know, you're morphing everything together. So the belief is, hey, let's split things. Let's keep the church religion separate, and let's have law and order separate uh, from that. So we know it goes two ways in this one. Law and order's down here. The calling comes back up here. And we have the church as being the thing that unifies, that brings people together. And that's where Winthrop really comes in and becomes powerful, is that this calling, this, this codified religion, is what helps bring people back together a bit more from living this lawless kind of state-like environment. So you see, it's still a settlement, like the circle says, but the church is at the center of it, and people are starting to come back together. They're starting to attach because of the church. After step three, though, we move into this thing later where you see it come back together, where churches start taking over again some of the law and order, some of the actual um, laws of the areas. It may not be big laws, but little laws and things like that. And the reason this happens is we, in step four here, coming over to the new land, uh, we have this new flock of ministers, according to Rutman in the article, He's talking about Arminianism, uh, Arminianism. And what this is, this is the concept that predestination uh, in Christianity is no longer something that is there. So basically, you're not born destined to either heaven or hell, according to this. So these preachers, it's something that's crazy conceived that, wait a second, you're saying that God does not have a plan for my life. It's up to my free will. That's crazy. That's blasphemy. That would probably go against a lot of the Protestantism in England at the time and definitely against the Catholicism. So these religious leaders are flocking over, and they're changing the way that religion is understood 
and they're changing the way that settlers come uh, and interact with each other. So Winthrop is the first person to start it. He starts this movement initially, but then you see as you get on through steps, uh, it's really step four is where we get introduced to these new types of preachers that are coming over that have you know, a bit more experience, maybe that fire branding, that speech delivering, that type of stuff. They're coming over trying to trying to convince people of this new concept, uh, Intermedianism. Uh, good concept, got to remember it, but this is kind of how I would explain Rutman's argument, is that the Puritan way has definitely changed. And it's very important for us to know that because we tend to have this imagery of the Puritan being this person that sits at Thanksgiving and gives the food to the Indian, all this stuff. Um, and the reality is, it probably wasn't like that. And this is why religion has a lot to do with it. And the Puritan religion itself has a lot to do with it. So just understand that drawing, because uh, it really helps you understand how things were formed, especially early life in the colonial period. Um, so know that if you have any questions, DM me, send me a reminder. I'm willing to help. But again, all as I did is I took uh, Rutman's article, which was this one, New England, page 50 through 52. Uh, and you were supposed to answer these questions from the bottom. I'm just giving you a graphical representation of it. Um, that's it. Any questions again? Ask me. Awesome. Good stuff.